I guess the, the first place to start is kind of um, the idea for, for doing a, fe a feature film. Obviously, uh, stand-up comedy, um, TV specials are, were kind of the, the height, and then HBO specials became the, the next high. Absolutely. Uh, a feature film, you know, very few people enter into that realm. So where did the idea come from to say, you know what, let's roll the dice and, uh, and do the fluffy movie? Well, I can thank Kevin Hart for that. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of comics, or not a lot, a handful of comics that have gotten that opportunity, starting with, you know, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, uh, you gotta figure, Kings of Comedy, um, and now Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart had two successful back-to-back -back films, and they noticed that the films cost very little to make, but they grossed quite a bit, and so they saw the potential there, and they said, well, maybe there's somebody else out there that can do that. And that's when I got the phone call. So fortunately, he had a lot of success with those, and uh, Hollywood's took, you know, they took a chance. And they said, hmm, let's see what Brown can do for you. So, <laughs> so I got that phone call based on the fact that my social media is so strong. You know, it's like the Facebook is, mm -hmm. is in the millions. Uh, same thing, you know, Twitter's up there. And my YouTube numbers are really, really strong. And so it's kind of a calculated thing where they says, all right, uh, would you be interested? And before they could even finish, I was all over it. Yeah. And, and uh, they said, all right, we need you to produce this film. And the only problem I had was that when they approached me for it, I was literally two weeks away from recording my last special. And so I did, did that special, and then I'm like, okay, now I gotta work on this movie. And so I had to crank out an hour and a half of new material in a little under a year. Wow. And, and how, like, how quickly does that stuff come together? Because you, obviously you're touring, you're testing a lot of stuff out to see what will fly and what won't. I mean, how, how difficult is that process creatively to kind of hone in on what would make a feature? It was a lot of, a lot of rough nights, let me tell you. Uh, first of all, just as much, you know, we, we had to work a lot. We knew that the, we had to deliver this project, deliver this new special, and so, I mean, I was on the road 46 plus weeks. You know, just every night, just a little bit more, adding a little bit more, adding a little bit more. And then as you're adding new material, you're taking away some of the older stuff. And so you gotta basically do this thing right here where you kinda just, you know, out with the old, in with the new. And uh, there was a lot of nights where uh, I just had to vent on stage. I had to just vent and throw stuff out there, see what would work, what wouldn't. And then I took a chance and I got very emotional one night. And a lot of that material from that one show made it to the film. Uh, I started really talking about how, first of all, I was suffering with, and I'm still suffering with diabetes. I'm type two diabetic, and uh, you know I had to lose 100 pounds. I mean, like I had to do it quick because my sugar levels were through the roof. Medication wasn't helping, and I had to, you know, my legs were swelling up, turning purple, and it wasn't a good thing. Very dangerous. So that was the first thing, and then the, that's the first thing I address in the film is that you know what, I'm 100 pounds lighter, but you guys got to know that I'm losing weight not because I'm trying to be Hollywood, but because I'm sick and I have to, and I still have a ways to go. And I think it's important that I had to explain that to the fans so that they don't think I'm changing on them. You know, you can't just be big one day and then now you're not, but you're known as the fluffy guy. So it's, yeah, that was, that was very challenging. I started dancing. <laughs> My son is like, you're fat, your fat's going everywhere. Well, guess what? This fat makes your mom horny. How, uh, how important is social media? I mean, obviously, you talk about social media. You have far more Twitter followers than I do. Uh, but uh, but as, especially in terms of comedy and comedians, is there pressure to always be on? Um, because a lot of people are tr you know, almost testing out material or they're always tweeting uh, jokes or whatnot to try and stay relevant. Um, so as a result, you know, do you find it difficult to maintain a kind of a personal grasp on social media, but also, you know, be the persona or the personality that the people expect you to be as well. I think the fact that I, uh, I don't try to go out there and be on all the time, you know, I, I show people, hey, when I'm on stage, I'm on stage, but when I'm off stage, I'm gonna tweet some pictures of food, I'm gonna tweet some pictures of me holding a shot glass, I'm gonna tweet some people, you know, pictures of me hanging out with, you know, doing normal things. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've managed to connect with people is that I'm not always trying to, oh, look, I'm entertaining you, I'm always being funny. I, I use Twitter for what it is, you know, it's just, it's grassroots, I'm hanging out and I'm accessible. That's the one thing that I think has uh, been the most important thing is that, you know, if somebody sends me a message, there's a good chance I'll reply to it. Or if nothing else, favorite it or just show you that I'm acknowledging what's going on. It's a little harder with Facebook because there's so many numbers, but for example, Twitter, if somebody sends me a message more than once, 
that lets me know they really want my attention and I'll reply to that and people see that I go back and forth. Social media is so important and I think more people need to realize that you don't always need Hollywood. The reason why Hollywood came to me was because of my social media, because of the numbers, because of the YouTube. You know, the only reason I have a fan base overseas is because of, of Facebook and Twitter and putting YouTube videos out there. Overseas, they don't know Comedy Central. They don't know HBO. They don't know Showtime. But guess what? I see you on the YouTube. <laughs> I see you on the YouTube. Very funny. And every people, you know, I got like 5 million views in Saudi Arabia from a YouTube video clip. It's like, are you kidding me? I could go over there and sell at an arena. That's insane to know that I could do that because I'm just uploading and I'm interacting with people. You know, and Hollywood's not doing that. And I think now they're noticing that they need to start respecting the internet because the internet eventually is going to take over. Absolutely. Digital is... And digital is the way to go. And so it is important for other entertainers, not just comedians, to be involved with their social media. And that's one of the things with me is that I'm very much hands-on. You know, you get somebody that's way, way up there. And they just usually, hire somebody. Usually they have like a team of people that tweet on their behalf. And okay, whatever, but you know, that's not really interacting. I don't have a bajillion followers, but the ones that I do have are very involved. All right, and so I think it's a, you know, it's important. And, yeah, if well, I tweet if I tweet something out right now, there's a good chance we're gonna get a reaction from good. it. Good, make sure you, know? you retweet uh, yeah. this video, this interview. There's been times when I've um, <laughs> I do this a lot too, where uh, I'll have uh, fan appreciation day, and I, I think more artists should do that because it's like they're the ones that make it possible for you to have the nice cars and the great life. And so I'll, I'll do this like maybe once a month where I'll take fans for pancakes, or I'll say I'm gonna hang out at the mall, I'll, I'll buy everybody a soda, and it's just basically an excuse for people to come out and say hi and take pictures and stuff like that. And it's it goes a long way. It does. You know, I was hanging out at a 7-Eleven last week, and we filled up a 7-Eleven, and the guy was freaking out. Where does everybody come from? I, go, I sent out a tweet. Sorry, bro. Thank you. Can you do it again? I, I don't know. <laughs> this fluffy fan appreciation day is the greatest thing ever. Yes, it's the greatest thing ever. Slurpees for everybody. Slurpees for everybody. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you.